Someone once told me that the most boring thing in the world is looking at someone else's travel photos. Everyone has memories of being trapped at a dinner table with your least favorite aunt, being forced to scroll through their photo album or iPhone and seeing the most poorly composed holiday photos imaginable. So why is it that those images, which might mean so much to your aunt, mean so little to you? And in this age of social media, when you take photographs and put them online, who are you shooting for? So over the last three weeks, we went to a Russian wedding. Went to friends to try some wine. <laughs> I went to Switzerland just basically for travel. Um, we didn't shoot much. Anne shot some stuff for our wine company. I was driving around, posted a few pictures to Instagram, shot a few rolls of film. And um, in the end of the day, we didn't get, well, I didn't get that many like fantastic shots I was very happy with. And now at the end of our trip, I look back and I kind of think, that's all right. Sometimes in an image, everything is perfect. Composition's right. The lighting is good, but there's no spark. There's no love. So how do we fix that? Especially in this age of social media, we think about the audience. Well, now we have an audience too. Dude, these are massive cows. Because going back to audience, right? Right now, when I shoot, I shoot some photos for Facebook for our friends. Uh, I, sh I used to shoot more serious photos for Flickr or something, but that's long been neglected. And then I guess ever since I started working Digital Rev, um, I started posting a lot more to Instagram. So having an audience on Instagram or anywhere can be pretty awesome because, you know, honestly, as a, any kind of creative person, um, half of you wants to keep your work personally to yourself so no one can ever criticize it, but you also kind of want to share it. So, you know, art is never really developed in isolation. So it's great when you can post it, you can get feedback, you can learn from others. And that's the great thing about posting and having an audience that is public. Yeah, so this is, you know, might as well show you guys around while I'm here. Uh, it's pretty hard to find. Uh, so then Interlaken is like, you could say, chock full of people, it's very busy. And then when we came here, we just kind of wanted to rest after all the traveling. So Anne found this really great Airbnb spot. And it's like a really small village and like, Life here seems very oddly idyllic. So before, you know, we shared everything to public, back in like early 2000s, we used to use like MySpace or like Zanga. I think that's only for Asians, I don't know. Um, this is like right before like Facebook 2006 or some shit. And then, um, so we'd post like tons of pictures, blog form, Tumblr, I guess, but just basically for your friends. And then I kept doing that all throughout like these last 10 years. And then I really actually love kind of taking pictures funny moments and things just for the small audience and uh, it's kind of weird then because when you know if they look at my instagram for example the instagram sometimes is usually more boring um, but then that kind of satisfies one outlet for me the instagram part and then the private stuff the weird stuff is kind of like for another audience so when you kind of separate again you separate those you know shots into different categories each time you're out and you're like oh i didn't get the perfect you know beautiful landscape but well, I found a funny moment with friends and we'll check it over here. So being happy with yourself does help with being happy with your photography because, you know, if you're always stressing yourself out, then, you know, I mean, of course, sometimes that does help people improve, but also sometimes you just get, you know, angry at yourself. And uh, knowing your audience, separating those two, helps a lot with that. So for each of these different audiences, you can have your own projects. And then, you know, when you're traveling and things, it's great to define, like, to basically divide your time into these different projects because it allows you to keep experimenting. So everyone has their own style, which is great. You should always develop something that you like seeing and something you like shooting. But of course, to experiment, you can also use these different audiences to kind of explore 
uh, different sides of things. So for example, you know, the street photography or let's say candid photography, funny moments can be for friends. And then you have landscapes, serious stuff for public Instagram. So when we were traveling this time, we had some stuff which is work projects, work videos. We had a little bit of time for our, well, we always squeeze in time for our own personal photography. Uh, Anne's always shooting, I'm always shooting and things like that. And then um, also like now in Switzerland, we have a little bit of time for this episode three. So uh, each kind of video, each kind of thing is totally different, especially I've also been exploring a lot of drone photography, which is super fun for me. It's completely new. Uh, most of the time I forget to actually take photos, but just flying around and, you know, exploring this amazing place with like, a completely different uh, point of view is just really good fun. And also it really helps you get stay creative. An issue that keeps coming up over and over again nowadays is the issue of authenticity. What images are real? Which ones are fake? What emotions are being manufactured? What idea of ourselves do we want to show to the public? This is always relevant for travel photos, where everyone wants to look like they are having a great time. But it doesn't make any sense to pretend to yourself that your life, or a moment in your life, was better than it actually was. There's no need to put a filter to salvage a sunset when it's actually cloudy. There's no need to look like you're having fun when you're actually bored out of your mind. Photography helps us remember. It's a selective form of reminiscing. Sometimes a holiday can be so bad or so good, that in five years, which passes by faster than you can think, often all those negative memories fade away because they weren't captured on film. And at the end, all you're left with are just pictures of you and your best friends. Thank you.